if you have a Bible, let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Okay. And if you don't, I will read slow enough to where you may get the point. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. So basically, if you hate someone and say you love God, you are a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So you see people every day, right? How can you hate the people that you can see, but love God who you have not seen? Let's go to John 14 and 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. So if you keep God's commands, I believe that is his rules, right? I believe so. You love them. So if you are obedient to Jesus Christ, then that is how you show that you love Jesus Christ. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. So you will be loved by Jesus and his father, and he will manifest to you. So you may say to me, Kevin, why are you reading these things to us? I think there are people who say they love Jesus Christ. They love God the Father and stuff like that. But according to the scriptures, if you are treating, I believe I am giving the right interpretation. If you are treating other people wrongly, how can you say you love Jesus? If I am not following God's rules, how can I say I love God? If I am going against my creator, if I am choosing to not go by his rules, if I am choosing, I guess I can say, to live separately from him, how can I say I love him? For instance, let's say I have a wife, which I am not married now. If I am very rude to my wife, if I curse her, if I burn her clothes, if I slash her tires on her car, if I am not lovingly to her, if I don't really do much toward the area in affection or whatever else, how can I say I love her? Wouldn't my words be empty? If I love my wife, I believe something will show, right? I believe I may hold her. I believe I would do some things for her. Not saying it always have to be money stuff. I believe I would be not selfish, right, toward her. 
ultimately, if I say I love her, there will be fruit of what I am saying. There would be something to show, right? I think something would show that I love her. Okay. If you say you love God and you cussing folks out, you rude to your mother and father, your step parents or whatever, you lying all the time, not saying that we are going to do everything perfectly, but you are consistent and you are not really willing to change, but you doing all this lying, cussing and being rude and lying on people, yelling at people in a very bad way. How can you say, hey, I love God. How can you say that? By the way I treat people, I believe I am showing how my relationship is with God, right? Well, Kevin, I am trying to change. Okay, I understand that. But still, by the way I treat people does not show my relationship with God. I am not saying I have to kiss everyone's feet. I'm not saying that I have to take my hair and dry your feet off with it. I'm not saying that. But I believe the way I treat people shows, in a sense, I guess I can say, how my relationship is with God. And let me say it like this, depending on the situation as well. I believe, I'm saying it in this sense. If I say I love God, I believe I am going to be courteous toward people. I believe I am going to be loving, caring, and probably so much helpful to people. How can I say, God, I will give you $1 million. God, I will dust your feet off. God, I will do this and that if I am not really willing to help other people. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I believe there is another verse and it came to my mind. And it has something to do with the way you treat other people, you are treating God the same way. I believe there is a verse saying something like, um, God, where, when did we feed you? When did we visit you in jail or something like that? Or... When did we give you something to drink or did this or did that for you? And I believe the verse was saying something like, when you treat the least of people or whatever, you are doing it unto me. <laughs> I may be <laughs> saying it all wrong. I may post it in the comment section or something like that. I may post these scriptures in the comment section as well. So basically, in a sense, you can't really separate how you treat people from how you treat God. If I say I am willing to almost do everything for you, God, I think I should be able to do something for people, whether they are Christian or not. I believe most of the people I help don't really have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They may say they do, and they may, I guess, but as it seems from their fruit, well, you can't really say that either, I guess. Let's say they are living on both sides, looking like they are lukewarm or something like that. But does that mean I shouldn't help them? Because as it seems to me, they are not fully doing what is right, which I don't think I am fully 100% perfect. 
We need to treat people right. You can't treat people wrong and believe you are right with God. No. In essence, if you treat me wrong, you are treating God wrong, right? If you treat a drug addict wrong, you are treating God wrong, right? Some people think that it is okay to be very rude to people, then go to church and think everything's okay because you are going to church and the person you treated is not God, so you are straight. I don't think so. If you think in that way, I believe what I am saying is right. And if you think in that way, that is wrong. I believe I said some people may think that way. So work on treating people well. And look too, man, please look. I think so much in my life, I reaped so many bad things from treating people wrongly. And some years back, I really regret what I did to some people. Like, I was so immature around a certain time. So immature. So, like, mindless type of stuff as it seems. And I think so many bad things happened to me because of how I treated people. You will reap what you sow. I believe in Colossians 3 and 25 says something like, oh, to me, let me paraphrase. <laughs> if you do people wrong, wrong will come to you as well. I hope this makes sense. See, you may say living for Jesus Christ is boring and it is restrictive and you can't have fun and if you go to heaven, you are only going to wear white and sing songs all day and not really do anything else but singing and reading the Bible. Look now. I was the type of person that was really shallow and cared so much about, you know, looking real nice and going to the club and all that mess like that, bars or whatever they are called. Now, I thought that life was fun, but I think as time passed by, as much of my ignorance <laughs> faded, I believe I started to notice or see that it is much more beneficial to live for Jesus Christ. You may say it is boring. You may say it is whatever, but it is so much better than living a life you think is fun. I think many people think a sinful lifestyle is fun and it is not. From the outside, it does, but I think if you peek under the sheets, maybe that is a bad analogy, but if you look under the sheets, I guess, <laughs> I think you will see that there is a price. I believe there is a price for sin. You reap what you sow. You can't do wrong and believe no wrong is going to come back to you. I am trying to tell you, look, if there was no heaven, if there was no hell, if there was no God, okay, do whatever you want. But there is a God. There is hell. There is Satan. There are demons. There is, I believe there is a lake of fire. I lived a life I may have not done like every bad thing in this world, but I used to do bad things too. 
and it is not beneficial. It is not benefiting you much in the end. From the surface, it may seem like it is, but it is not. Ultimately, because I think it is hurting you more than anything else. I live for Jesus Christ. I have determination and encouragement to live for Jesus Christ. Why? Because as I learn more about Jesus and his rules, I see that it is folly to try to go against them. Like, have you ever tried skiing uphill? Like, is it even possible? Like, I never skied, but why place so much effort in trying to do something that is senseless when it isn't really benefiting you? How is skiing uphill benefiting you? You putting all that you putting all that time and effort in trying to do something silly. Let me stop, man. Okay.